And we are live. Welcome to Cognitive Rampage Podcast. Hope you're taking care of you. Hope you are living your Cognitive Rampage, y'all. Hope things are going good for everybody out there the best they can with all this government overreach. Ooh, let me back it down a little bit. That's probably where I'm going to head to on this podcast when I start talking about it. Everything sounds good on the back end. We are good. You know, I have kept kind of silent about what was going on with COVID. I really did. I didn't have enough information. You know, I didn't just pick a side of what was happening right away. You know, I didn't do that. And and to be frank with you, when this started, I was a COVID Nazi, man. I was a terrible person to live with, man. I was just, I was spraying everything. I put myself on lockdown, at, like it, right when they were talking about it, like beginning of March, right? I was doing that. I was doing everything I was told I was supposed to do, which is, <laughs> which is rare for me. I have to be honest. It's rare for me that I do everything that I was told. But I too, like many of you out there, were scared. I was scared by the media. Each day I would wake up, I, I, I read the news, I listen to the news from multiple sources, um, from the BBC podcast to uh, YouTube news channels uh, to even I watch the mainstream just to see, you know, what they're feeding. And I did. I found myself terrified. I found myself scared. Uh, I was nervous for so many people. And this is probably not going to hit home for a lot of people. For I, I know I'll make some enemies at the end of this podcast, uh, but it's been some time. It has been some time. I've done some research. I have had doctors on my podcast. Dr. Lane Phillips came on. About the time Dr. Lane Phillips came on my podcast, if you hadn't listened to that, please go back and listen to it. I, I started to, to, to change a little bit about what was happening and what I was doing. And to I mean, maybe to my own public dismay, I don't know, or my own social media loss or followership, I don't know. But at this point, I really don't give a shit. At this point, I don't care. I stayed quiet. I laid back. I just watched. I listened. I watched. I abide by the rules. I did what I was supposed to do. And, you know, as I watched different social media platforms um, black out certain people with certain information, doctors, DOs, PhDs are being blocked out of things they were saying. And look, I'm very good at playing both sides of the fence. Let's let's not get it twisted. I, I can play the middle ground, right? I understand both sides. But I do understand that the media itself is a business now. It is not about, it is not the Cronkite days where we're delivering the news unbiased uh, to the citizens of the United States. It's about selling. It's about ratings, reviews, how many people are watching, how many people are clicking, tuning in, how many people are engaging, right, to sell commercials, right? This is where the news has gone. We, we, we have entertainment news now, and I don't care if it's CNN, Fox, either side. It's entertainment news, period, and it is political side entertainment news right whichever team you choose and I and I do not claim a team I do not claim a team I barely even claim myself independent or in the middle right because there's some there's some right views some Republican views that I that I abide by most definitely that that I believe in there are some leftist views that I that I abide by too right uh, so I'm, I won't walk down a political choice of myself but as this began to come on uh, I, I was I was nervous for people. I, I cared about whether people were going to die. I was nervous myself, right? Because some of those variables, all you would see reported, right, are these outlying variables of this random healthy person that you know went through three weeks of hell, right? And I don't want to I, I don't want to discount people that have lost people, people that have got sick during this. I don't want to discount that, but the reactionary response of our states of our governments, of our counties, it became a, a circus. It became a sideshow to almost watch this of what was happening, right? And I'm not, I'm not putting blame on a president individually, right? I, I'm, I, I agree with some people that we could have used a lot more of a uniting type of president, right? I agree to that point. Um, but on the other hand, with the scare tactics of the media, which we know they do, right? We Before this COVID shit even happened, I think most of us could agree that the news became an outlet of, of, of shock media, of shock and awe, right? We share the things that make people tune in. And I could go into the evolutionary reasons of why we tune in to the shock and awe media, right? Why they do that and why we do that as a mass whole, but I'm not going to. 
but we tune into those things we watch it right so more m moreover than none our, ourselves as are in our are, as individuals right in groups are to blame for why the news does what it does because the news is like google right that they, they want to deliver to you the information that you want to see that you are watching that you are turning in tuning into and so the news just precipitates what it is that we are watching it, it pushes that forward so we are the ones that tune in we are the ones that watch it we are the ones that go hey the ratings went up when we ran this disaster story when we ran this oh my god we all have blue toes and the kids are gonna die and everyone's gonna die it was fucking chicken little for the last month or two enough to where even me man I'm, I'm with you I, I, I wore masks uh, I toned my shit down I didn't go anywhere I was on lockdown I ordered my groceries I tipped extra for those that were working. I support those on the front lines in the middle of this shit. And I'm not saying that this thing wasn't a thing. I'm not saying that there wasn't an outbreak. I'm not saying that all this was some conspiracy horseshit. I'm certainly not saying that. Because we know there's certain numbers and things that have happened. People you know, people I know that were in those cities that were most hardest hit. Uh, I mean, we have heard those stories. I'm not denying the fact that is a thing of something we had to worry about. And maybe, and maybe we went on lockdown just enough and we got lucky. Maybe we got lucky with this thing, right? Who knows, right? That's the, that's the other side. We, we, we could, we, we could get, say just, Hey, we got lucky with this. Maybe the next turn or the reemergence. But every time I pull up the news, I have now begun to watch, read the news with, okay, how are you selling me? What are you selling me on right now? And, and the install of fear across both sides, right? I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's both sides have their fault, right? I don't want to get into a political shit, right? Let me, let, allow me to return. <laughs> let me back up, right? I don't want to get into that. But where I am at right now is... After they've lifted, we're in phase two down here in Florida, right? I know everybody's got jokes about Florida is crazy or whatever. But if you look at Florida right now, we're pretty steady about what's happening. Nothing's getting worse. And let me tell you, I live in New Smyrna Beach. I live in New Smyrna Beach, and for the last two, maybe three weeks, this beach has been insane out here. People are packed in. It is insane. I mean, flooding this place, the beaches, the stores. It is absolutely ridiculous out here in New Smyrna Beach. And I, I, I don't want to knock on wood here, right, that n nothing, nothing, no clusters, right? They, the, the verbiage that the media began to find, clusters, new symptoms, new sideways symptoms, 20% of your lung shit is gone. The fear, the fear that came from the media has begun has begun to get appalling to me no one was reporting recovery numbers no one was reporting positive stories all it was is death rates and 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 more more people orlando sentinel you're guilty as shit for it so fuck you i stopped following the orlando sentinel too i started looking at the headlines and then reading the article and how the headline didn't have to do with the article right this shock and all scare tactic shit and how people buy into this for certain reasons right we all have our reasons to buy in to believe to this this, right whether the business that you do is something that serves what's happening right now or how your business died one of I, I am one of those business owners where this COVID destroyed my business it blew my business up in my face and it annihilated it it annihilated it we were a week away from signing the new lease from my comedy club and moving forward with the new club and it was annihilated by this it was it was just annihilated i i couldn't move forward i, I didn't want to sign on a dotted line with thirty three hundred dollars of rent that i was supposed to owe no matter what was happening right the landlord was not going to do a sliding scale with me and then all of the fear mongering about it's going to come back it's going to come back now i may look like an asshole when this comes back right in some resurgence in the winter time right i get it but the things that people did not think about the reactionary response the reaction i'm a chess player people if you simply react to your your opponent's next move or last move you will lose the game you have to play forward and the reactionary response from our governments uh from our our our, our 
our local governments, from everybody, from people in society too. It was this reactionary, holy shit, if you care about people, uh, you stay home, right? You wear a mask if you care about people. I mean, there's so much misinformation out there with, with the government saying 60 days prior, masks don't do anything. Masks do something. Masks definitely do something. You should wear a mask. Now we have a political divide based on who's wearing a mask. You know somebody's political party. Like It has been politicized to a point where it's sickening. But now here we are in the opening side, right? We, we've pretty much opened because let me tell you, here in New Smyrna Beach, nobody is abiding by those rules, okay? Nobody. I have driven around at night looking at the bars and places that are in town. They are packed like sardines. It is insane. No one has given a shit or is abiding by it. Now, you may hear this and go, well, you'll see. You'll see. You didn't abide by the rules. You'll see. Stay at home. Look, in my, in my comedy bit, in my stand-up comedy bit, I use this joke. I, it was hard for me to believe that our government, state, local, whatever, federal, was actually telling us to do a symptom of depression. Do you know the first question on a depressive symptom to measure whether you have depression or not? This is about the only scientific way we measure you have depression is with surveys, right? There's no test that they can give you for depression. But the first question is, are you isolating? Are you isolating? So are you isolating? Well, that's just, we just got ordered to isolate, right? We've just been ordered to isolate. So now we're telling people. So the aftermath of the isolation, the aftermath of the fallout of businesses, of people losing their jobs, it is absolutely a tragedy. And no one thought about this. It's just reactionary response to the media and to what people were screaming should happen. And I'm not doubting that it was very bad in very condensed areas, okay? Condensed areas like New York, certain areas of California, Washington, right? There were some bad places where this shit got hit. And it's going to sound bad, but even if you run the numbers at a length versus the population, the death rate, you're still somewhere under 1% in a death rate, right? And now everybody wants to argue numbers. Well, I got numbers from this place. I got numbers from this place. These numbers were underreported. Well, what I can tell you is I talked to a doctor that was at my house, right? This doctor said to me what they were doing is they were moving cancer patients across rooms, putting them in terrible situations, right? Because what was happening is funding, and still now, funding is going toward hospitals that have COVID cases. Dude, I actually had a hospital call me yesterday with a marketing call. A marketing call. When's the last time a hospital or urgent care or doctor's office called you to remind you, hey, we're open, right? They don't call you. They don't market to tell you we're open, but they're dying. Hospitals, urgent cares, they're falling apart in places that were not heavily hit. People aren't going to the doctor. They weren't doing small um, uh, surgeries and, and certain things like that. People were dying of heart attacks and, and things because they weren't serving them. Because what was happening is the amount of federal and state funding that was going toward hospitals that could classify a patient with COVID, you got more money. See, we already have a problem in this country that healthcare itself is a capitalistic ran business, okay? See, this is my left side, right? You see the left side coming out. The fact that people's lives and healthcare is somehow managed on a profit bottom line basis. We have a fucking problem with that, okay? But let's just be honest. You all have been through it too, right? Order test one, order test three, right? You go through it. Nobody tells you nothing. You seem to get sicker the more doctors you go to. So what this doctor was telling me is the funding that was coming from the federal and state levels for each patient per patient, I think he was saying somewhere around $15,000, right, was coming. So the more patients that they could rack up in the tally marks of COVID diagnosed patients, the more bailout money you got, the more funding you got. So let's just be real. This is what was happening. This is how they got their funding, right? When they're issuing trillions of dollars, right? I don't even, I'll get into the bailouts of businesses and big businesses, I should say later, right? They were first to get bailed out, right? Airlines, cruise ships. For me, they should have fucking failed, right? They, they did stock trades and certain little maneuvers in the background, which, matter, which meant they did not have cash on hand, right? Because they knew they're going to get bailed out. Right? I think they all should have crashed. That's a libertarian in me. Let the businesses crash and see what pops up behind it. But these small businesses, the real backbone of us, they were the last to get funds. Some funds were misappropriated. Too many funds going to businesses. So many people didn't get funds for what's whatsoever. Micro businesses, that's 10 employees and under, got shunned like crazy. The restaurant business is almost over. And then Trump's ass has got to come out and say something like, well, the restaurant business will still be here just with different owners. Like it didn't matter to everybody else that lost their restaurant businesses, right? 
So, I mean, d allow me to back up, right? So those businesses took their bailouts. But if you're a business and you're a hospital and all it takes is a possible. Now, this doctor told me that they were forging that people were actually testing positive for COVID, right? Forging. If you're a bottom line business, then you need to keep your lights on and you get 15 grand or whatever the number might really be per patient that you're getting hit with. Do you check the COVID box? Do you check the COVID symptoms so you can keep your employees paid at hospitals and things? You probably do. Private health care does that, right? You got to get money. And meanwhile, doctors and nurses are getting cornered. They're getting beat around like a pinball in a pinball machine. They're getting threatened that if they do live videos or talk about it, they'll get fired. Their pay was getting cut. They were getting trimmed because hospital administrators are taught to run businesses on a run hospitals and, and other health treatment facilities on a shoestring budget, right? So, so actual people on the front line are forced to work in, in in environments that are dangerous, that are underfunded, um, people are taking pay cuts to stay on, threatened, threatened uh, uh, threats of losing their job if they're to speak out and say anything. I mean, it is fucking absolutely ridiculous how much is tied into this. So trillions of dollars came out in funding. Trillions and trillions of dollars came out in funding. But I personally know... I personally know at least 30 businesses that are now out of businesses, friends of mine that own small and micro businesses. Remember, small businesses can be up to 100 employees, right? 50 employees. Small businesses, I, I refer to them as micro businesses, 10 employees and under, that have gone out of business, that have not been able to make a living, that have not been able to pursue government. And here we are. We're back to just normal. Thank God we're free and we're allowed to get back and we will ignore the government overreach that has just happened. A massive government overreach, reaching in, taking away your freedoms, telling you what you can and can't do. Either way, th I have witnessed this. I mean, even back when September 11th happened and they passed the Patriot, Patriot Act after September 11th, they can tap your phones. If you're believed to be a terrorist, they can arrest you and you'll never see a fucking jury, right? Like these are things slowly, slowly taking away your freedoms like the shore is disappearing in most beaches, right? And I, and I watched this again and it became this social justice idea of people fighting back to people that weren't looking out. Look, to me, I try to look to common sense, right? If you are, if you're, if you're possible to get COVID, right? If you're a, a if you're, if COVID is a threat to you, if you have underlying issues or disorders, stay home, right? But then everybody talks about, oh, you're anti, you're, you're, you're symptomatic, you're anti-symptomatic, right? So you don't know you're out there spreading it to everybody. If I'm spreading it to everybody that's getting it, like we're, the numbers are ridiculous. Either way you look at them, you're talking about low numbers, right? And ordering people, ordering people to stay home. Do you know what staying home in isolation does to your immune system? No one out here is talking about what you can do for your immune system, what you can do to make yourself healthier, vitamins you can take, certain things you can do to up your immune system. You're not hearing that, right? Because, right, telling people to take vitamins, vitamins doesn't make money. There's money in vaccines. There really are, right? There's money in some pharmaceutical pharmaceutical cure. There's money in that. There's not, vi there's not money in telling you to take vitamin D, supplement vitamin C, get some sun at least for 20 minutes, up your immune system, right? Try to stay healthy. There's not money in that. So you don't see that. All you see is we're working on a pill for you guys. We'll get a shot. We'll get you a shot and a pill and then you'll be immunized against this and you'll be ready to keep going, right? I mean, it, it is ridiculous. You didn't see that because you know what? Vitamin D is too easy. Vitamin C is too easy. Upping your immune system, right? No, isolate, stay home, and just wait this shit out. If you're a good American citizen, you will stay home. And government overreach, reaching into our freedoms of what we're allowed to do, what we're allowed to, to gather in. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Assembly, the right to assembly? We're talking about Bill of Rights here, man. The right to assemble? We can't even do that. People are getting arrested for paddle boarding. People are getting arrested for being in a public place. That's the last thing we need to do is give cops more power to control something, right? And on a side note, I live out here at the beach. I threw a fucking comedy show. That's what I did. I threw a little party out here of some personal friends that we got together. And it wasn't long before the cops were here telling me what I am allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. I have neighbors telling me what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do on my own property out here. For me, 
having a private party or whatever the heck it is that you're doing. I, I, I am sickened with the government overreach, with the neighbor overreach, with the accusations of people, the businesses that have failed. I mean, the fallout from this is yet to even be seen, is yet to even be seen. Almost a 14% spike in suicide. Okay, 14% spike in suicide since this happened, since this lockdown began. In the Bay Area, it was reported that last year's total amount of suicides, last year's, 2019's total amount of suicide, that number was hit in just four weeks of the lockdown. Four weeks of the lockdown that happened. For every percentage point increase in the unemployment rate, there's about 1.6 percentage increase in suicide. Think about that. Every percentage point increase in unemployment, 1.6% increase in suicide. That's insane. That is insane. The fallout of telling people to stay home, to isolate. The, look, they're talking about all, the, uh, the abuse rate. In case you didn't know, the abuse rate, one in seven children. One in seven children have experienced child abuse or neglect. Nearly 1,770 children died of abuse and neglect in the U.S. in, in 2019. That's before the lockdown. That spiked nearly 40%. Spiked 40%. Think about that shit. The hotlines of domestic violence and child abuse hotlines, nearly 100% increase within the first two weeks of the lockdown. Think about that. But yet, you're an asshole if you leave your house without a mask because you're not thinking about those with pre-existing conditions that are vulnerable to what's happening. See, where does the line get fucking drawn, right? Where does the line get drawn? That if I'm out there without a mask, I'm risking people's lives, and how could I? If I want the economy to open back up, then I care more about money than people's lives, which is horseshit because look, look how many lives were already lost during the lockdown. During lockdown, you're talking a 40% increase in child abuse, people. In domestic violence, a 40% increase in that. And that's the first two weeks. First two weeks, a 14% spike in suicides since this began. We'll see the numbers come and, and start to rise on the reports either as the, as the weeks go on, right? So this happened too. But nobody's talking about that, right? It's it's social justice and, and, and signaling. It's social signaling for your side, right? That's what's happening. If you wear a mask or you're not wearing a mask, you're out in public, you're not caring about people's lives, well, what about these lives? What about the lives, the 14% spike in suicide, the 1.6% increase for every percentage of unemployment that goes up? Do the math with 330,000 people, Right? 1%, 300,000 people, or 300 million people, really about 360 million people, 1% of that. Then you get a 1% increase, 1.6% increase in suicide from that. Where are those numbers at? The abused children, one in seven, nearly 1,800 kids died of abuse in 2019, and that spiked nearly 40% in two weeks, in two weeks. So before you start getting on your social soapbox, telling people that if you're out there and you're not wearing a mask, if you're not quarantined, if you're not staying home, then you don't care about people's lives. If all you care about is the economy opening, then you don't care about people's lives because these are lives too. The suicide rate, the abused women, children, and men, the increase in these things, you got a 100% increase in the first, first week of the U.S. lockdown on the hotline for domestic violence and abuse. Domestic violence actually spiked 18 to 30 percent across the globe. Not in the state of Florida, not in my county, not in the United States, across the globe. Across the globe. This was already an epidemic before this happened. Domestic violence and child abuse, one in seven. Are you kidding me? One in seven? But yet they'll stand on a soapbox on the left side and tell you that if you don't wear a mask if you don't stay home you are not concerned with other people's lives that may be at risk and you don't care about all of us this is bullshit calling bullshit the, the, the social stance that people are taking without even thinking about the full chessboard is sickening to me sickening to me businesses have shut down 
People have killed themselves, wives, husbands even, children have died, are, are sitting in threatening situations, our right to assembly has been denied. And if you do it, you're judged on it. Hell, you may be Twitter canceled. I, I wouldn't be surprised I'm Twitter canceled after this shit. I mean, divorce rates have spiked. Divorce rates have spiked. Now, that takes me to a little different edge of the subject, right? So the numbers itself aren't really out on divorce spiking. What we have are a bunch of lawyers saying, holy shit, I have never got this many phone calls in my life in four weeks about divorce, right? So it's expected to rise, but maybe ask yourself why, right? Is it just because you're locked up in the house with this person and, and that's what caused it? I mean, I think so many of us and so many people out there too, have they got in this routine. They got in this routine of work and come home where truly they were married to their career and really just dating their family or their spouse. Because you're working Monday through Friday, you're on the road, you're on airplanes, you're traveling, or you're working at the, the factory or the shop or whatever you're doing, 40, 50, 60 hours a week, you get to see them Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, you're in bed early anyway and out. Now, all of a sudden, you have to be at home. You actually have to be the mother and father at home. You got to be the husband. You got to be the wife now. And now you're at home spending time with this person, and now you may be going, holy shit, you know, what did I do? I think maybe facing mortality. I think everyone that had faced, I mean, because look, you had to question your mortality through some of this shit, right? You had to come out and go, man, what, what is really important to me? Am I really happy? I could die tomorrow. I could get COVID and then I'd be cranked up. Well, you could also get hit by a car, okay? You could get hit by a car. You could have a heart attack. Crazy shit happens, right? You can get the flu and die from it, pneumonia and die from it. Look, you can, as Al Pacino says in the one movie, you can get killed walking your doggy, right? These things can happen. But when our mortality is shown in our face, displayed on the media and every media outlet over and over and over and over again, you begin to question it. So a lot of people have come home going, am I really happy? Some people have had to spend time at home going, what really makes me happy? Does this person make me happy? Now I have to be with them. Or am I just going along with what the social construct says I'm supposed to do as a husband? What I'm supposed to do as a wife. This is what you do. It lasts forever. You marry somebody. You have the kids with them. You stick it out. That's just what it is, right? And on a side note, so many people out there that question other people's choices to be single, to get divorced, or whatever they do, or, or not to work a nine to five, right? Or not to buy a home picket, right? That they question those people hardcore that they're living the wrong life. Look, you're only questioning those people's lives because it directly questions your choices in life. Because the choices they have made, or you have made, directly questions the choices they have made in their life. That, hey, you're telling them you could have made different choices. You didn't have to do that. And then when you live that way, people tend to look at you and go, oh, that's just wrong. That's not what life is all about. You're supposed to do it this way. Be wary if anyone tells you what it's supposed to be, right? Be wary when they tell you what it's supposed to be or if somebody's out there questioning your choices. You see, with the lockdown that came, I'm hoping it spawns some sort of new life, that it spawns some new creativity, that some new renaissance begins, right? That maybe, maybe, we could tap out of the idea. We've realized that we're so dependent on a country like China for our goods, for our cheap products, for our health, for our medicines and medications, that maybe we wake up to it and say, what the fuck are we doing? But the problem is that sounds good, but are you willing to pay 40% more for a product? Are you willing... Are you really willing to let go of this idea of fast fashion that you can show up at Walmart and Target and for less than $100 buy yourself a brand new week, week's worth of wardrobe? Are you willing to do that? Will it? I, I don't know. I don't think it's going to change the dynamic. I keep, hear, I keep hearing people say, we can get back to the normal. I don't want to get back to the normal. I don't want to get back to the normal. The normal was distracting. It distracted husbands and wives from their, their true passions, from their lives. It kept people trapped in domestic relationships they didn't want to be in. It kept people in jobs they really didn't give a fuck about, that didn't motivate them, didn't make them feel enthusiastic. And maybe you have to be willing to lose everything to change everything. Maybe you have to be willing to tap out of the idea of the big home, 
of all the toys because I know a lot of fucking rich people out there and those rich people got to keep buying toys to justify their 70 hours of, of work that they put in or not seeing their family or kids working 24 7 well, look what I got right I'm hoping I do hope that we do find this change this 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 dynamic changes that the paradigm shifts right you're hearing more people about growing food at home you're hearing more people about hey you know since i was at home i realized i make these really cool knives or i make cool tables or i thought about this business that i've always wanted to do i started writing this book i've always wanted to do if you were able to climb out of the depression that hit you because look there's a study of uh, a, a few rats that they put in a maze they let this rat run the same maze with the same right left turns over and over and over again to the reward of the cheese the food whatever bait whatever food they were giving them right could be bait right <laughs> over and over and over and over and over almost thousand plus times that this rat or these rats ran this maze then what they did is they simply took the maze and flopped it they turned it right so now the rat has to make the opposite choices the opposite left the opposite it right the opposite straight to get to the cheese at the end if you will well almost 90 percent of the rats ran to the point where the turn had been shifted and simply ran in circles they ran in circles in their location think about that right i know rats aren't humans but mm, maybe they are right that this rat uses was used to running run run 15 inches make a right then make a left you're at the cheese run 15 inches make a right make a left run 15 make a right make a left make a right make a left you're at the cheese and all we did was make that different run 15 inches make a left make a right you're at the cheese and the rat couldn't handle it the rat spun circles in place and just ran there in circles until it just stopped like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing that's what we are as humans you get up, you go to work, you go home. You get up, you go to work, you go home. You travel, you're on the plane, you go to the hotel, you go home. Well, I'm doing it for my family, right? We, we, we consider it sacrifice. We repeat the maze over and over and over. Look at the new shit I bought. Look at the new house I bought. Look at how we've upgraded the vehicles, right? Over and over, you run the maze. And then what this COVID shit did was all of a sudden flipped it. You couldn't run 15 inches and make a right anymore. You had to go, what the fuck am I doing? And if that was the response from rats, imagine the response from humans that have emotions involved, that have the feelings and thoughts involved in, in this constant routine. This is why you're seeing the spike in divorce. The spike in suicide is because that person is then sitting there spinning. That, that should make you, at least it makes me, it makes me question the routine that we have been running. What routine have you been running that when that routine is removed, you lose your fucking mind? Now, I get it. I got empathy for those that have lost money, that have to feed their kids, that are sitting there. I Fuck, man. I feel you. I feel you. And I get it that you got to do what you got to do to feed those kids at that point. And shout out and big love and empathy and hugs to those parents that had to do that. That single mother, single father with multiple kids that had to go to the front lines they had to go to the grocery store they had to go to the plant they had to keep serving people because they needed that paycheck to feed their kids but yet a left side would scream at you and tell you how dare you go to work how dare you be out there but yet that person is certainly ordering food from somewhere that person who stands on their social soapbox and tells you you're a terrible person if you don't stay home well you're eating something Somebody is stocking the groceries at the grocery store you went to. Someone's checking you out. Someone's delivering those groceries to you. They're okay, though. You need food, right? You need food, so they're okay. They can stay there. Anybody else, if you're non-essential. Do you know what it does to a human psyche to tell someone that's been doing a job for 20 years that they're not essential? You're not essential. That your job means nothing. That what you've been doing for 20, 25 years really has no no emphasis on the on, on society as a whole. You're not really that important. That's what that means by saying you're not essential. If you're feeding your family with what you're doing, you're probably essential. You're probably essential. But maybe, maybe, right, to spin a positive side of this, maybe we could look at that and say, hey, maybe I don't need a house this big. Maybe I don't need this much shit. I hear people say, it's reminded me what's important. Has it? Because the minute they lift this and you can go back to work, are you right back in it? And we'll just act like it, man. It's the cognitive dissonance. So I've watched multiple posts of people telling, telling me they have now realized what's important in their life because of this. 
I'm sorry that it took a pandemic to get you to realize what's important, but at least it woke you up for a second. And then you get to go, I know what's important in my life. And the minute you can go back to work dating your family, you're right there because it's what you got to do. You see, it's the toys, the corporate trophies, the larger home, the experiences even. The experiences are another thing. For those of you that may not acquire stuff, maybe you acquire experiences. Experiences cost money, bro. Sunsets, I get it. I understand. Well, there's best things in life are fucking free. Well, you need fuel in your car to get there to do whatever you're going to do. You probably got to pay an admission or parking fee to get into what you're going to do, right? So, I mean, it, the experience the experience itself, look, the, the, the marketing industry, as a marketer myself, the marketing industry realized this many years ago. When people were waking up to the idea of materialism and looking beyond that, guess what they sell you now? Now they sell you the experience. They sell you the experience that you must travel. You have to have experiences in life. Most people travel because they want to see a place, but they want to tell people they've traveled to a place, right? And if something like this doesn't tell you that maybe travel isn't good for us, I don't know. Right? I'm just I'm pointing that out there, right? That if you gotta get six to sixteen shots to go somewhere, eh, you maybe shouldn't have been there. You probably you probably shouldn't go there. I'm just pointing that out. I know that you want to check off that you saw the holy site and that you you oh I've been to this amazing place because I'm an amazing person. I've traveled and I'm well known and I'm just I'm cultured and because I'm cultured I like to say I've traveled, okay? And provide that. But fuck that shit, man. Maybe we shouldn't. I don't know. Maybe America should just be concerned with itself. I don't know. I'm not into globalization. But every single president, all the way back, didn't matter, Republican and Democrat alike, all the way back to Reagan, probably further, all the way through, were supporting this idea of raising China to another level, ending poverty, and creating a new middle class in China. And China played possum along the whole fucking way. And every single party and president since then bought into this shit. And then all of a sudden they popped down, ah, well, we own most of the shit that you buy, that you consume, we buy it. Hell, we have a shipping container storing issue we have so many shipping containers in the united states that they're selling them you can buy them so cheap if you need a giant shipping container you can get them cheap as shit because the millions that are sent here from china and other places bringing shit here we don't send them back because we ain't sending shit out right and the corporations are caught in this right i mean if if you if you want if you want to compete in a business market, that's just how you scale, right? You ever watch an episode of Shark Tank, right? What's it cost to make your product? Well, we make it at home. It costs this. It's handmade, right? No. If I'm going to buy into your company, we're going to make this in Bangladesh, and we're going to cut it down by 80%, and then we're going to be able to compete in the market with a lower price because what it costs to make that product is lower. That's just business. That's just business. That's what you do. So in order to business, in order for businesses to thrive and strive and to compete... That's what you have to do. Do you remember this store that came out in the 90s called Made in America? It was a, it, it was made in the USA. It was a challenge store toward Walmart. Huge, giant factory, you know, warehouse-looking store like Walmart was set up. There's still the bones of one remaining down in South Florida. But they didn't last long because us as Americans were not... We may say that, but we were not willing. We have been trained... In the cheap market, the fast fashion, the cheap products, the shit we can just go buy a new one. Just throw it away. We'll buy new ones. We'll donate the shit to somebody. Okay, look, nobody needs clothes anymore in a third world country, by the way, all right? Fast fashion is killing kids in third world countries, but beyond that, we just make ourselves feel better because we'll, quote, donate it, right? We have shipping containers of clothing that we can't store out here that we then pay off some third world leader and then they pile up these clothes in these third world countries in giant skyscraper-like fashion, and then the dyes and the poisons and whatever inside of these clothes leak into the waterways and the soil, and it poisons kids drinking water, families food. That's a, that's a real fucking thing. That's why I switched, man. That's a, that's a real fucking thing, right? But you feel good because you can say, I, I just donate my clothes. I, I donate my clothes. To fucking who? To who, okay? The world is clothed right now, all right? But can we get off of that fast fashion, that cheap product, Walmart tit, and really back up what it is we say? That we want American made. That we want to take care of our own country. I, I know this sounds hardcore right wing. I get it. I fucking get it. I mean, there's some leftist views I got. I'll spit those out here too. I believe healthcare should be open to all in the United States. Okay? I'm throwing that out there. I do. 
I think healthcare should be open. All right, UK, the UK has had a, a really good issue. They they're doing okay with their healthcare system. Canada's done okay. And I know you pull up articles and post and share with me about how what a tragedy it is and how terrible it is. I get it. Or you'll hit me with the fatal right wing question: Who's going to pay for it? I get it. Maybe we maybe we tax some uh, one cent on some Wall Street trades, right? Maybe we don't have to raise everybody's taxes like everybody's scared to do to pay for something. But think about your own your own ha history, your own past, right? I I think it's fucking terrible that we have to have employment based health insurance. Right, you don't leave your job most of the time because of the health insurance it provides. Right? You got to factor in your low paying salary because this business provides you this good health insurance and poor business owners have to factor in health insurance to acquire good company to acquire good talent. Benefits matter. Right? I do. I just think that. And I think college should be free. Have I lost everybody now? Have I lost the left and the right now? That I think college should be free. Uh, look, college might be free, but you still got to pass the fucking classes, okay? You still got to pass the classes. That's that's just. But some of us are so stuck on the fact that it's like that's the way we did it. When I was your age, I went uphill both ways. I went into debt. I worked 18 jobs to pay for my college. Well, your class cost 120 bucks, okay? All right, your class cost 120 bucks. Shit changed. But we're so even us as old people, and I'm classifying myself as old people, is we're so stuck in how it was for us, how it should be for everybody else. I mean, there's an argument for universal, universal basic income right now. The fact that they just kicked out 1200 bucks to mostly everybody. And, uh, well, the government didn't go belly up. And nobody's getting taxed even more on it, right? That they just kicked that money out like, fuck it, and we got it. Because, I mean, think about it. If you added $1,200 to your monthly revenue... Now, you can't be that family or that, that person or couple that goes, hey, we got an extra 1200 bucks. Let's get a bigger house that we can't afford, right? But if you live, in, live within your means or even downsize your means, what is an extra, because if you're a couple, right, what does an extra $2,400 a month mean to you? Now, let's second that. What is, if you didn't have to pay for a hospital visit, a surgery, an appendix to be pulled out, you didn't have to pay... $20 and $50 and upwards co-pays, $5 and $10,000 deductibles just to kick your insurance in anyway in our reactionary medicine program anyway. What the fuck, right? Think about your hospital bills you've paid. Think about the dentistry bills you've paid, right? Think about all of those things. Imagine that is removed from your overhead and you get an additional $2,400 and that's if you're just a couple, right? Maybe you do quit the fucking job. Maybe if you can find health insurance uh, from someplace else or if health insurance is covered and it's no longer this benefit that's offered to you and now that job you work where you know you should be getting paid 80 grand a year where you only get paid 40 grand a year because they give you health insurance so you have to stay at that fucking job. Maybe you leave that fucking job and start your own business. That one creative idea you always wanted to try or that artist stuff that you wanted it to do. Maybe if you downsize your life and as a couple, 2400 bucks, upwards of 35 500 dollars as a family of three and four but then there's that other side of the coin right there's those now that are collecting unemployment from what's happening that are refusing to go back to work and they're hiding under the guides of i'm not going back to work because uh it's safe i care about my life and my family so i'm not going back to work when somewhat the truth is you're making more at 600 a week than you were at your 400 a week working there okay just putting that shit out there i think i'm probably I think I've probably <laughs> verbally assaulted everybody now. I think I'm covering even my dumbass. I'm in that same group, right? In some way, I don't have unemployment coming in whatsoever, right? I lost most of my clients in the marketing, uh, in my digital marketing company when this fucking happened. My comedy club basically went the way of the fucking dinosaur that maybe we can start it back next year, 2021, because investors and even um, banks, they're going, eh, it could come back in the fall. So with all the screen back, if it could come back in the fall, I can't do what I love to do, right? But it's a thought. Just think about that for a minute. If you can step out of the party politics of it all, right? Right? And and I know there's gonna be the there's gonna be the freeloaders. That ha that is legit. That's a legit argument too. Those people that are making their twelve hundred dollars a month, staying at home, not doing anything, not contributing to the economic machine to which our capitalistic machine is, right? And people scream socialism and, and these hardcore terms, right? But just marinate on that. What would what could you do in your life or for your family if you had just an extra twelve hundred a month coming in? 
or if you had just an extra 2400 coming in because there's a couple or a married couple coming in 2400 bucks a month what does that do for you as long as you live within your means what's that do so there's an argument at least there's 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 a conversation to be had about universal basic income right i mean at least a conversation because it's happened. We certainly bail out these Fortune 500 and, and 600 companies like it doesn't fucking matter. They're allowed to do whatever they want. Stock trade outs, dividend buyouts, flip it around to make their stock worth more than what it is, cash out some shit. And then when this shit hits, they're like, holy shit, we don't have any cash. We're going to fucking die. Well, uh, maybe you should have cash on hand. No, I don't know. Maybe they, I think the bank should have fucking failed in the recession in 2008. I do. I think they should have fucking failed. And we should have... Who knows what comes out of that? The the ingenuity of Americans and businesses and people that could drop back in. Maybe that happens. I don't know. But but, but the overreach of government of, of your freedoms bothers me. Just because they may give you a stimulus. Just because you're willing to accept a, an economic bailout. Which really, 1200 bucks, really this isn't shit. This isn't shit for most people, right? Doesn't mean that you now own me. Doesn't mean you own me. Just because you give somebody money, you don't own them. Just because you gave gave some people $1,200 doesn't mean you can tell them what they can and can't do with their lives. Doesn't. Just doesn't. But there's arguments to be had here. Both sides need to be listened to. If we could crawl out of our political divide and choices, I mean, the, the overreach... I. Look, I played music here on Saturday, and I had cops come and tell me to turn it down. 25 feet. Music is allowed 25 feet. If I can hear within 25 feet, it's invasive. Where's the freedom, man? I, I, I don't know. Buying some land in a house out in the middle of nowhere is looking really good right now. And I know it's looking really good to a lot of people right now. Getting the fuck away from people where you can do whatever you want to on your own land. But it wouldn't be long before they develop and find a way out to you that you can't do something. But it's looking really good to me right now. Really, really good to me right now. I guess I'm just venting the thoughts that have been on my mind through this whole COVID thing. I've stayed silent for most of it. Just taking in both sides. And I hear both sides' arguments. I really do. I've I've tried to hit both sides' arguments here. I'm not saying there's a right answer for any of this. I'm not saying I have the answer or this is what we're supposed to do or should do. I'm merely pointing out the fiasco of what's the which this is. Both sides have good arguments. The middle has good arguments. The right, the left have good arguments. Our rights have have been taken away. The government has been telling you what you're allowed to do and not allowed to do. The health insurance industry certainly has been privatized and is a profit-based business. Treatment and health care has become a profit-based business from mental health to medical health all the way the fuck through. That has been the demise of mental health from the beginning. I've done a thousand and one podcasts on why mental health being ran by a bottom line and controlled by insurance companies is a fucking problem. Fucking problem. Work-based insurance too. It's ridiculous. But the businesses that have shut down, people that have worked 15, 10 years on their restaurant, on their business, have had to just shut the fuck down. They went from zero to nothing. Seven employees, 10 employees, you feed your family on the 10%. have just had to go away. Fear-mongering of the media. You don't trust the media either. I'm not, I, I bet most of you that are listening to this right now can't give me a trusted source of news. And if you do, if you do say, yeah, here's a trusted source of news, well, then I could probably pick what party you're in. This is a trusted source. This is a, nobody's a fucking trusted source of news, okay? And with nobody being a trusted source, we're, we're just out here like a chicken with our head cut off. Like, yeah, look what they said. Look what they said. And they said, and they said this. So it's easier. It's easier for us to just assign ourselves to a party, assign ourselves to a political allegiance. That way we don't have to think about it. Whatever they tell me, then I don't have to think about it because I'm busy, right? We're busy. We're busy as people trying to run businesses, trying to raise families, trying to stay in shape, whatever the fuck. We're fucking busy. I don't have time to dig into 18 articles and then fact check this shit that's what the news was supposed to do the news had the facts checkers they had the fact checkers they had the they ran their sources they checked the back end when real news was happening so when you got the news from cronkite you were like all right 
They fact check this shit. They called sources. They had multiple sources for they ran a story. Right now, somebody hears some shit on Twitter. And they're like, "Oh shit, that's true. Run with it." And they run story. We don't believe. We don't believe the media at all. But for some reason, we believe the fear that was pushed to us that we're all gonna fucking die. And then, like nothing, we're right back at it. I. I it's fucking crazy to me. I'm like, what the fuck? Then, not like, two weeks ago, we're all gonna die. Crazy symptoms are popping up in children and everywhere else. And two weeks later, fuck it. We're all out here like whatever. You're not seeing crazy spikes and clusters like they said would happen. You're not seeing any of that. And I've been at the... Dude, I live here at New Smyrna Beach. Like I said, this place has been fucking packed. Restaurants at 50%, you're out of your fucking mind. They've been packed, packed, period. I had a restaurant I tried to call and order food yesterday from. Said that they were so busy on the inside and with takeout orders and what they had on the inside... Two hours before they closed that they were no longer taking orders. That I had to come in and eat if I wanted food. So I was like, restaurants, hold on for a minute. You're begging for money to stay open. Now I'm trying to give you money. You're telling me to fuck off? <laughs> it has been absolutely insane impacted the beach. Nobody here is giving a shit. Okay? You barely see anybody with masks. You don't see that happening here. It's over. Now, I may, I may be eating crow here soon. You haven't heard that line in a while, right? I'm, I may be eating crow here soon that some cluster thing pops out at a small town somewhere and because all this crazy shit. I don't know if you saw the post about the Snapchat in Daytona Beach, what was happening. Holy shit. Insane, right? The Ozark, the pool party up there, like it was insanely packed everywhere. Now we wait. Now we sit in silence and wait. Are the clusters coming? People... People have been standing on their social soapboxes, just screaming. I'm staying home because I care about Americans. I'm staying. Maybe you're staying home because you ain't got shit to do, dog. Maybe that's happening. Judging other sides. Both sides are right in certain instances. Both sides. That's what made America fucking great and made it amazing was the fact that somehow between the two sides, we managed to mush shit together and find our way forward. And push forward. And I, I guess maybe I should end the podcast right with something more positive, talking about we will find a way out, and right, and talk about we'll we'll get over this, and and we'll move on. But but I can't help but look back and go, what the fuck? We shut down businesses, we shut down people. I mean, it became communist here. It became that way here. V for vendetta happened. We were told what we can and cannot do, what we cannot say, where we can go, what you must wear. You cannot assemble unless in groups of less than six, then 10, then 20, six feet apart with no scientific basis whatsoever, by the way, in the six feet spread. I, I hope that no clusters do arise after all this holy shit, because when they open the gates, they open the fucking gates, man. That's just period. That's just what's happening. That's, I see it happening here. We see it happening everywhere. We all know. We all know. But we, 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 we walk up to it like a pool of cold water, right? Some of us put our toes in it. Can we? Can I go outside? I, ooh, that's cold. And we run back in. Right? I, I shouldn't be out there. And then some people are like, fuck it. I'm doing whatever. I'm going wherever I want to go. Do whatever I want to do. I'm out there. Right? I'm not saying either side is wrong. Not saying the COVID shit didn't happen. But it, I, it amazes me that just two weeks after we're all going to die, we're all not dying. And, and we're just supposed to go by it? We're supposed to just act like that shit didn't happen? We're just supposed to act like serious government overreach into our personal lives didn't happen? We're just supposed to be like, well, at least we're allowed to be outside at the beach again. Thank God we're back to work. <laughs> back to the routine. And most of us won't give a fuck. Most of us will just go right back to the rat maze we're used to running because it gives us the cheese that you don't have to be home. We didn't have to change anything. We can keep paying for fucking everything that we bought that we barely get to fucking use. We go right back to the normal. We're right back to normal routine and shit doesn't change. But I hope, I hope, I hope there's a paradigm shift in American made things in a country that cares about itself before other fucking countries. And I'm sorry, man. It, it's to each their own, right? I know I sound like a fucked up shallow tea party right winger when i say that i know that i know that but tupac said that shit a long time ago how is it we got billionaires and damn near a trillionaire now in bezos 
But we have kids starving in this country. Capitalism, that's why. Because they have the right. I get it. Can we meet somewhere in the middle of this shit? But the overreach, I'm fucking tired of. Telling me what I can and can't do. How loud I can play my music. Where I'm allowed to go. I can't even touch my own fucking face. I'm touching my face. I'm touching my face. I'm not allowed. You can't even touch your own body, motherfuckers. Can't touch your own bodies. I got governments telling me I'm supposed to do things that we we as mental health pra- ex- mental health practitioners we call actual symptoms to isolate. We destroy our bodies. We are social creatures. We've removed ourselves from socializing with others, hugging our loved ones, seeing the people that make us happy, doing the things that keep us energized and enthusiastic to keep living. Even those of you in the job that you fucking hate, at least it was rewarding you with the things you got to do with your family on the weekends, right? We can go back to those things, right? But they're telling you you cannot. And if you don't listen to them, You're a terrible person that doesn't care about people dying. Are you so factual about that? And is the other side so factual about that? I'm telling you, I I have walked down (laughs) as loudly as possible on this podcast, the left and the right side and the center side and all that gray shit in fucking between about which sides are right, what's really happening. It should maybe this and maybe that and maybe this, right? So before you take your stance so so rigidly in what we should do, what people should be doing if they cared, what people should be choosing, be willing to question your own shit. Because I flip-flopped. I was terrified when this started. I was worried about our country. I was overbuying food. I stayed at home. I washed hands, lysol fucking feet. It was a nut job. Paying more for food to be delivered than I had to pay for. And as this went on and this went on, the more I read, the more I learned, the more I went, wait, the, what the fuck, man? I can't keep doing this. We can't keep doing this. And we cannot allow, again, the state governments and federal governments to overreach into our lives and our freedoms once again. And we can't be scared to be Twitter canceled or social media annihilated because of it. But we also have to be cognizant. We have to be aware. Wash your hands. Duh. If you're sick, stay the fuck at home. If you got pre-existing conditions, stay the fuck at home. Don't risk it. But we can't stay on lockdown forever. That's anti-American, motherfuckers. I get pretty intense, guys. And girls. And all in between. I love y'all out there. I appreciate y'all tuning in to my rant. Things I need to get off my mind. Whew. Which I certainly did. I love y'all out there. Respect each other. I guess that's where I'm in it. Respect each other's right. Respect each other's right. To either of you. Respect those that want to stay home. Respect those that don't want to stay home. That's the beauty of this country. Is you have the right to do either. You have the right to say whatever it is you want to fucking say. Hell, you got the right to condemn whoever it is you want to condemn. You can soapbox. You can yell out your social justice shit. You can do whatever it is you need to do. That's just the right we have. It's just how it is. Just respect each other's right to do whatever it is they do. And if you're scared, stay home. If you're not scared, don't stay home. But no, you might get sick. That's just, we have to We have to go on living. We have to. There's rights in both sides. There's rights in the center. I wish we could get away from the parties. Perhaps we'll pull together and change the paradigm of this country. Perhaps we will no longer make health care a profit ram business. Perhaps we're willing to back out of subjective categories, categorizing people and their ideas so fast. Universal basic income. Oh, you're a socialist. Freedom to assemble is taken away. Oh, you're a tea party. Perhaps we can... Pull some of the definitions and ideas from each side and mesh together something beautiful. Because that's what America is. It's a mesh together melting pot of some beautiful shit. And 
I'm sorry, the government's never going to fucking tell me what I can and can't do. They did. They're not allowed to do that. Neither is a group or a party or a faction or anybody else. I love y'all out there. Hope you're living your cognitive rampage. Hope you're taking care of you. Love you.